Hey everybody, so today I want to take a look at five NHL players that I think are poised for bounce back seasons in 2021-22. They're coming off pretty rough years last year for whatever various different reasons, and I think they're in a good position to have a bounce back year this year and should be significantly better this season than what we saw from them last year. These are certainly not the only five but these are five guys that kind of stand out to me that I think are likely going to be much better this season than they were last season and have have an opportunity to get back on track to be what they should be at the NHL level. So before we get into it, I just ask that you please hit that thumbs up and subscribe. It helps out a ton and is greatly appreciated. But let's get started and we are going to start with Charlie Coyle of the Boston Bruins. He can play center, he can play right wing, and he is probably going to be the second line center for the Bruins this year with the departure of David Krejci. He is coming off an abysmal season last year. I was very, very hard on Charlie Coyle last year. He played 51 games. He only had six goals and 10 assists for 16 points and a minus four rating. However, it came out after the season that he basically played the entire year with an injured knee. So 16 points in 51 games, obviously not good, but he was on a bum knee for pretty much the entire year. So assuming that he's healthy this coming season, I'm expecting quite a bounce back here from Charlie Coyle. I'm giving him a little bit of a pass for last year because of the knee injury and you just you can't be an effective hockey player on a bad knee. It's I mean and that's really really hard to do and I think a healthy Charlie Coyle is going to be a lot better than what we saw last season. The other thing is, is that he is going to get a huge opportunity to play bigger minutes, higher in the lineup, and be the second line center for the Boston Bruins this year, which is going to give him all the opportunity in the world to have that bounce back season. So what would be a bounce back season in my opinion? I want him around 50 points. Um, I, he's done it before. He did have a 50 plus point season in Minnesota. Um, he's definitely a guy that I think should at least be scoring 45. If he had any less than that, I think it would be a huge disappointment. I'd like to see him hit the 50 point mark and I'd like him to take that second line center spot on the Bruins and run with it. Grab that opportunity and do not let it go. I think Coyle's perfectly capable of doing that. Um, he's shown in the past that he can be, a. uh, uh really good middle six center and you know if, if he has a 50 point season this year this would absolutely be a huge bounce back for him and again the key for Coyle is being healthy um, you know when he is at playing at his best and fully healthy I think he's very much capable of this um, obviously last year I think the injury was the main reason why he had such a lousy season so I'm expecting a lot from Coyle this year and we'll see if he's able to pull it off. Next up, Nate Schmidt, who is making the move from the Vancouver Canucks to the Winnipeg Jets, and he is a defenseman who is coming off a pretty tough season, uh, the worst year for Nate Schmidt in a long time last year with Vancouver in 2021. He played 54 games, only had five goals and 10 assists for 15 points, and was minus seven. This is a guy who has almost always been a plus player in his career, was a minus seven last year, and almost always, at least during his time in Vegas, a 30-plus point defenseman. He only had 15 last year. I am expecting Nate Schmidt playing a big top four role with the Winnipeg Jets to get back to being the Nate Schmidt that we saw in Vegas and not what we saw last year with Vancouver. I'm looking for 30 plus points from him, solidifying himself in a top four role on the team and getting back to being a plus player and um, you know a really good solid two-way defenseman who can play 20 plus minutes and he's going to get every opportunity in Winnipeg to do that because they kind of need that those top four guys. That Schmidt and Brendan Dillon were Winnipeg's big additions this offseason to their defense because they really needed to add some top four D guys. They can't put it all on Neil Pionk and 
uh, and Josh Morrissey. And last season, Winnipeg only had two defensemen over 20 points, and that was Pionk and Morrissey. The, and Morrissey barely got over 20 points. They need another kind of offensive guy and, and guy who's going to bring some some production from the back end. Nate Schmidt is absolutely capable of doing that. He's capable of being a 35-plus point defenseman. And, you know, he's solid defensively, too, when he's playing at his best. So um, I'm expecting big things from Schmidt within a very big role with Winnipeg. I think he's going to have a much better year than he had last year in Vancouver. And uh, this should be a big bounce back year for him. Getting back to being the Nate Schmidt that we saw in Vegas and not the one that we saw last season. Next on the list in our first goaltender is Frederick Anderson, who is now with the Carolina Hurricanes coming over from Toronto. And uh, he had an abysmal season last year. He had injury issues throughout the year, but when he did play, his numbers were not good. He started 23 games. He went 13-8-3 which is above 500, isn't like it's an awful record, but he had a 2.96 goals against average and only an 8.95 save percentage. Those are pretty bad numbers. A goal, a goals against up near three and a save percentage under 900, that is really bad for a starting goaltender, especially somebody who's supposed to be like a top 10 starting goaltender. He was not even close to that last season. However, he now goes to the Carolina Hurricanes, who are one of the better defensive teams in the league, one of the best defensive teams in the league, and have been for the past couple of seasons, and they make their goaltenders look good. If you look at what Peter Morazic was able to do in Carolina, if you look at the numbers that Nedeljkovic was able to put up, especially last year in Carolina, this is a team that makes goaltenders better. They make their goalies look good, and this is going to be the best defensive team that Frederick Anderson has had in front of him since his Anaheim days. He's Toronto has not been a great defensive team. Now, I would say the past year or two, they've definitely improved defensively, but not to the level of where Carolina is at. Carolina is a shutdown, lockdown defensive team, and... They are going to, I think, make Frederick Anderson look good. And I think his individual numbers are going to get significantly improved this season with that Carolina team in front of him than what they were last year with the um, with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I think we could see Anderson potentially put up maybe the best individual numbers of his career if he really has a good season and bounces back. But for me, what would constitute a bounce back season for Anderson is at least a 9-10 plus save percentage. Uh, if you're a starting goaltender, that's really which, where you want to be. You want to be at least at 9-10 on the save percentage. Um, you know, under 900 is is just downright bad. 9-10 is, is you're getting to where you're at least an average goalie, and you want to be above that. I want his goals against average back down to close to 2.5 per game. Doesn't have to be exact, but around 2.5 goals against per game. Uh, obviously, that'd be you know about a half a goal difference per game from last year. That'd be a significant improvement. And he's got to win 30-plus games. If Frederick Anderson is going to be the starting goaltender of a playoff team like the Carolina Hurricanes or should be, then he's got to win 30-plus games this year. So uh, there's going to be a lot riding on Anderson. Antti Ranta is his backup in Carolina. You know, he's definitely... Ranta's had some injury issues and uh, really didn't play all that well when he did play last season. So I think there's going to be a lot riding on Anderson having a bounce back season. I think with this team in front of him, he is going to have a bounce back season. They're very good defensively, and we should see his numbers significantly improve. Next up on the list from the Vancouver Canucks, we have defenseman Quinn Hughes, who... Well, still put up a great number of points last season, but the big thing with him is his defensive zone play. We look at what he did last year. He played all 56 games for the Canucks. Three goals, 38 assists for 41 points. He's still a great offensive producer, but was minus 24 last season. This was a guy who was neck and neck with Kale McCarr for Rookie of the Year in 2019-2020. 
Makar, I think, has taken an even bigger step forward last season and has pushed himself into the Norris Trophy uh, level type defenseman, whereas Quinn Hughes took a step back last season, particularly defensively. Now, the team he was on was also terrible. Vancouver had an awful year last year. And that obviously played a role in Hughes uh, taking a little bit of a step back as well. But Hughes Hughes wasn't a number one guy last season. He 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 wasn't good enough to be a top guy the way that you know where people are expecting Quinn Hughes to be a top guy. And I think the biggest thing that he needs is to just work on his defensive game. I mean, the, the point production was still there. The goal scoring went down a little bit, but he still had 41 points in 56 games. But this is a guy that is expected to be a number one defenseman. Expected to be, honestly, a Norris Trophy candidate defenseman. And to do that, he is going to have to get better in his own zone. That is the one area that I really want to see significant improvement from Quinn Hughes is in his own zone. If you're going to be a top defenseman, if you're going to be a Norris level defenseman and a number one defenseman for a contending team, you have to at least be adequate in your own zone. If you're a liability in your own zone, it doesn't really matter how many points you put up. You're never going to be that true top guy. You can be a great offensive defenseman, but if you want to be a great all-around defenseman, you've got to be able to play well defensively. And that that's what Quinn Hughes has struggled with to this point in his career. The point production is more than there, but the defense has got to come for him. And I think we're going to see a big improvement this year. I mean, I think Quinn Hughes is going to be better than he was last season. I think the Vancouver Canucks are going to be better than they were last season. I don't know if they're going to make the playoffs or not, but there there's no way they can be as awful as they were last year again this season. I think we're going to see an improvement and Hughes should be able to bounce back in a full 82 game year. I would love to see him get up near 60 points, maybe even more than 60 points. And um, I want to see improvement in his defensive game. I mean, he is a defenseman after all. So you've got to be able to play defense. And that's the area that he really needs to work on. And I think we're going to see improvements this year as he tries to become that Norris level player. And finally, the last one, and these weren't in any particular order or anything, but Carter Hart goaltender for the Philadelphia Flyers. Obviously, last year was an atrocious season for Philadelphia. It was an atrocious season for Carter Hart. Um, I mean, I don't think it certainly was all on Carter Hart. The team in front of him did absolutely no favors. Um, but to blame, to entirely blame the team and not put none of it on Carter Hart, I think is just as naive and wrong as completely just blaming Carter Hart. I think there's plenty of blame to go around in Philadelphia for what happened last year. The team was terrible defensively, but Carter Hart did not play up to his potential in goal either and had a really big step back last season. 25 games started. He went 9-11-5 with a 3.6 six seven goals against average in an 877 save percentage those are horrendous numbers horrendous individual numbers for carter hart um i mean that just that's like we we don't see numbers like that in the nhl so He's got to have a big bounce back here philadelphia has made a ton of roster changes this offseason They've added Ryan Ellis and Rasmus Ristolainen into their defense. They're obviously making moves to try and get back to being a playoff team this year. And they're not going to be able to make the playoffs without Carter Hart bouncing back and getting back to being the Carter Hart that played in 2019-2020. And if he can do that, I think we're going to see a much, much better Flyers team this season. Again, what would constitute a bounce back here? For me, it's pretty much the same as Freddie Anderson. He's just got to get back to being a good, solid starting NHL goaltender. 9-10 plus save percentage, goals against average somewhere around 2.5 per game, um, and 30 plus wins on the season. If he If he's able to do that, he'll be back on track. He'll be back clearly as a number one goalie, and... Philadelphia will have a chance to make the playoffs this season. If he can't get back to numbers like that, then there might be a longer-term issue here with Carter Hart and the Flyers. But he, 
Everything about Philadelphia last year was a disaster. Carter Hart, I think, has a good opportunity to get back on track this season, have a much better year, especially with the new look defense in front of him. And uh, I would, I'm, I'm definitely expecting much more of the 2020 Carter Hart and not the 2021 Carter Hart. But those are five players that I think are poised to have bounce back seasons this year. I think just their their situations, their individual skill levels, the teams around them, all are kind of pointing towards them having much better seasons this year. And last year, maybe just being a one-off bad season, and they're in a situation now where they can bounce back. And that's um, definitely something I'm looking for with all five of these guys. So we'll see what happens, but um, obviously nothing is guaranteed in the NHL. But I, I like where these the situations that these guys are in, and I think they're going to have a chance to be uh, significantly improved to say the least. So with that, like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description. If you'd like to further support the channel, the links to our Patreon merchandise store donation link and channel memberships are down in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you guys soon.